Hi, my name is Matt, and this here is Alpine, and this is our 2020 Pleasure Way Tofino. Come on in. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Good girl. All right, in my last video, I gave you a full review of this 2020 Pleasure Way Tofino as it came straight from the factory. But in reality, these vehicles are meant to be customized, so today I'm gonna give you a full tour of how I use my Tofino and some big projects that I have planned for the future. Let's get started. Honestly, coming straight from the factory, there's very few things I've done to modify this front cab area of the van. I am a bit of a prepper though, so I do like to keep things very organized in case there's an emergency. I've got my headlamp hanging right here from the mirror. I've got an emergency survival kit, including a knife and bear spray sitting right here in the middle. Up top, I've got a first aid kit, and then down low, I've got kind of a repair kit for the most common things I might need for tools if I ever had a little quick breakdown. Now, in the middle, I've got all of my coffee and my drinks, and then up top here, right beside the steering wheel, I usually keep my wallet and my AirPods. Now, right here on the door beside me, I've got just about everything I would need to transport things to and from the van. I've got uh, very portable duffel bags that I keep in the door. I also keep some guidebooks here, like different hikes or places I might be venturing to on my trips. Now, this door over here when I'm traveling solo is really all about Alpine. I've got her food here, treats. I've got her toys, just everything I might need to get quick access to from the passenger side when we're on a road trip together. And then when I've got the seats turned around and I get up in the morning, this is really my favorite morning hangout spot. I typically sit right here. I boil a pot of water for coffee. make myself a smoothie. And then I do what my generation's version of the morning newspaper is, which is just sit here on my phone and mindlessly scroll through YouTube. Sorry, in terms of food and storage, I really keep things pretty simple. I, I pretty much eat the same two meals every day and then the third meal of the day is sort of a mix of a bunch of options. I've got the kettle up top for coffee and for doing dishes. I've got my Nutribullet here for my morning smoothies. Uh, so in the fridge, it's usually pretty bare. I've usually got a couple of things, almond milk, some different sauces. Usually have something for nachos like guacamole, sour cream, and salsa. Eggs and protein. Uh, I'll have a mix of either uh, little small pizzas I can make in here, pasta, stir fries, that type of thing. And then in the freezer, I keep some ice and some frozen kale. It's, it's pretty basic. Um, in this drawer here, I usually keep um, my pots and pans. This is usually really simple. I usually have two plates and two bowls. Um, I've got a blender and a grinder for coffee down here. This drawer is usually my dry storage for food. I've got coffee in here, some spices. I've got my smoothie blend mix. Other than that, on this side here is usually miscellaneous storage. I put in here whatever I need for that particular trip. Up top, this is probably the messiest part of the kitchen. I usually have dish soap in here and a bunch of uh, different utensils that I might use throughout the day. Up top, I installed a really simple paper towel holder. It's actually, these are bamboo paper towels from Walmart. Something very odd I found when I was traveling, but um, they're reusable if you need to, but they also serve as normal paper towels. They're a little bit more expensive, but um, they actually work really great for the van. Um, I keep a little drying mat behind here for dishes and a few other miscellaneous things. And the sink is pretty simple. There's not much in here I have. Uh, a cutting board, a couple sponges for cleaning, and then this. Now my friend Colin and I actually went and did this ourselves. We actually sliced this in half, installed the cutting board on this side, and it's held up pretty good so far. It's splitting a little bit in the middle, um, but it gives you another option for a cutting surface if you just flip it in and put it on top. All right, so moving back, this area serves as my mobile studio and office when I'm on the road. Then I simply grab the portable table from behind the driver's seat, I move it to the back, I set up my laptop, and I'm really good to go for the day. And from this position, it's the views that really make this a great place to work. I've got power outlets for all the power I need right here. I've got an Amazon Echo for audio and automation sitting right behind me. I've got this Google Fi hotspot plugged directly into the solar panels. And this really gives me all the power and data and everything I need to work remotely from anywhere in the world as long as I've got a good cell phone signal. 
I could honestly do a whole video about this Google Fi and the hotspot, but for now, I'll just put a card up here and you can go check out Google Fi for yourself. You won't be disappointed. All right, so moving into the back, this is where I actually store all my bedding and all my gear during the day. Just happens to double as a pretty awesome day bed for Alpine here. <laughs> uh, the bonus back here is when I don't have my mountain bike with me, um, I can actually lay across the back here from end to end and it makes a great spot just to nap during the day without having to actually put down the entire bed. All right, so now for clothes, I actually usually keep all of my clothes in these really handy little packing cubes. These ones are from Peak Design. Um, there's a little pocket here for laundry and the rest of it is just your clean clothes. And the cool thing about these is I can just pack them in my day bag for shorter trips or if I'm in the van for a longer period of time, I can just sort of place them in these little side pockets here um, to keep them out of the way. Now below this bed here is actually the garage and this thing is usually kept completely full. The really cool thing about this that you remember from my review video is I've got two actual ways to access this. One is I can just walk outside the van and get at everything by opening these two doors. And the other one is if little Alpine's not laying here, I can actually just lift up this part of the bed and I can access everything downstairs in the garage without actually having to leave the vehicle. Now the cool part is when I'm traveling solo, I can go from that to this. And as you can see, it's basically the same setup except instead of my luggage over here on the side, I've got my mountain bike and then just have to take off the two wheels flip it around and it fits here perfectly. Still plenty of room to sit in the back and the bonus is I keep the mountain bike inside the van. All right, on the outside, I also have this Thule two bike rack as well as a Kuat two inch dropper. Now what this allows me to do is move the bike from the inside to the outside, add an additional bike, frees up a ton of space and the best part, basically just lower the bike and then I have full access to the back doors right here. All right, now on the shower side, there is no shower inside this van, as I mentioned, but sort of here's the setup that I use if I need to take a shower outside. I just walk around here, grab this handy hose that just sits in the back and it's hooked up to the water pump, drop it over here. It's not the most sophisticated shower system, but when it's warm outside, it does the trick. Now this hose back here also doubles to clean equipment. I can simply grab it off here, bring it around the front and you know wash the bike or Alpine or whatever I need to use. Now, in terms of the rest of the outside of this van, I've left this thing pretty much unchanged with the exception of one big addition, which is a moonshade awning. And I want to show you how this works, but I think I've got a better spot to set this up. Let me just show you. This looks like a sweet spot for a campsite. As you can see, the setup here is really simple. I just got this little lounge chair for hanging out. I've got the table that I bring from the inside, the moon shade for sun or rain. And sometimes I have a propane barbecue that hooks up to the side, but other than that, I keep it pretty basic and this is my camping setup. I think that pretty much sums up the outdoor portion of this van. Let's head back inside. All right, let's move on to the pop top. Now, if you saw my review video, I think you know a lot of this already but the pop top really serves three main purposes for me. The first is when I'm stopped and I open up the top, I've got lots of room here to stand up. I can cook a meal here, I can change, I can just stretch my legs, it's pretty awesome. The second one is when I am stopped for a little longer, I do move a lot of my stuff from the either front seats or the back up to the top. It just frees up space in the back, gives me more room, keeps everything a lot more clean. And then the final one is during a nice warm day when I want to kind of open up the side panels and let the breeze flow through. This is just a really cool spot for me to nap. And it just allows me to not have to make the bed. I can just climb up here, open up the windows, and I'm good to go. So during the day, I keep this little portable toilet. It's actually a porta potty just sort of hidden here beside the couch. But don't worry, I'm not going to demo it. You'll just have to take my word for it. The model is actually a Thetford 135, and it's just over $100 here in Canada on Amazon. Um, really simple. I can empty this at any outdoor washroom or porta potty. Easy solution for a RV that doesn't actually have a full washroom. All right, now all that's left to do after that is put on some pajamas, close these blinds, press the magic button, and we're good to go.
All right, now when it is really cold or really hot at night, I have a couple options to heat or cool the van. So first of all, if I am plugged into shore power, I can plug in this Vornado heater. It keeps the van pretty warm, um, down to maybe minus seven or minus eight degrees Celsius. Now, if it's really cold or I don't have shore power, I can easily switch to the built-in furnace that runs off the propane tank. I have tested this thing and it can keep the van warm down to probably minus 30 or even minus 40 degrees Celsius. It's pretty amazing with the insulation and the propane heater. It's nice and toasty in here. Now, in terms of propane costs, it takes about 11 or $12 Canadian to fill the propane tank. It usually comes down to about one to $2 a night if it's very cold. Now, if it's too hot in here, that's a completely different story. The biggest advantage is the pop top because there are vents on the side. It really allows the hot air to rise and escape out the top the other option is there are three windows that just sort of twist open that have bug nets. Those really help keep the circulation going in the van. I also have a Vornado fan that I keep in here. Now, Vornado is kind of interesting. They're not really fans. They sort of circulate the air inside of a room. They actually work pretty well here and they're pretty quiet to operate. So between the heater and the regular fan, I really appreciate what Vornado does. Now, in the worst case scenario, if it's really hot, you can sort of open the back and open the side and use the bug nets like I showed in my review video. And that's gonna give you kind of a camping feel and keep things really cool inside the van. And if you're in absolute dire situation, you can always turn on the vehicle and run the air conditioning for a few minutes to cool things down. Now, in terms of security, I have these very small and very effective WISE cameras installed here in the van. I have two of them and basically they run off the internal Wi-Fi off the Google Fi hotspot I have in the back. And these things are very useful because during the day I can have them turned on when I'm away from the van. They're going to detect if there's a carbon monoxide in the van. They're going to detect if there's propane. They're going to listen for sounds if someone actually breaks into the van. And they're actually going to be detecting for motion. So if this side door here opens up, they're actually going to sense that there's someone outside and they're going to notify my phone. All of the footage from these cameras is actually being uploaded to the cloud in real time. So if there is an event, and even if the van gets stolen or the cameras get destroyed, I have a actual archive of that footage that I can bring to the police or use to help figure out what actually happened. All right, so that is it. I think you now officially know just about everything there is to know about my particular build of this Pleasureway Tofino. Now for the next few months, uh, I'm only gonna be putting out a video once a month. It's a very special project that I'm just starting out. No spoilers yet, but if you wanna know what I'm working on, you can check out my Instagram. And in the meantime, thanks for joining me on this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.